часто люди пытаются себе использовать несколько текстурок, а потом уже все то окончание, почему уже все то, что уже все то. Да? От этого у вас внимание.
Good afternoon. Can you all hear what I'm saying? Um, Pechrus, can you wave your hand if you can hear me? Fantastic. Great. Okay, let's give another two minutes till everyone is joining in because there are some more people coming in now and we'll start in two minutes, okay? My apologies. I know it's already past five, but... <laughs> start now. Um, first of all, uh, assalamu alaikum, uh, dear guests uh, or webinar guests, should I say, students, teachers, and friends or colleagues. Uh, well, allow me to welcome you all to today's webinar on the topic of computer delivered IELTS. Are you ready? My name is Eldor and I'm the founder of the King's Academy Language Center in Tashkent. Uh, and I'm the host today, and I'm the guest. So basically, it's a one-man show today. And this is my first actual webinar, so my apologies if there are some technical issues. And I'll try to do my best to sort them out as we go along. But briefly about myself, um, but let me first share the screen now. This is our presentation, by the way. I hope so you can all see this. Now, briefly about myself, well, I'm, um, I've done MA in TESOL at Webster last year, and I've done CELTA and have taken IELTS more than 10 times. And I've been teaching and mostly preparing for the exam for the last 10 years. And my last IELTS exam was computer delivered with British Council in May 2019. And I think this qualifies me a bit to speak about the subject. And I should also add that I'm not a representative of either British Council or IDP. So I'll be today talking on behalf of myself uh, through my experience. The reason I've uh, decided to uh, conduct this uh, webinar is, is basically uh, because of the recent developments with COVID-19 that changed so many things, including the IELTS exam and how it's conducted. And all the exams are postponed for now, um, for uncertain dates. And now it's clear that traditional paper-based IELTS can be quite a hazard for your health, especially immediately after the quarantine. So probably IELTS might be changing a little bit after the quarantine. But the deadlines are coming up for university applicants and so many questions are being raised among students, parents and, and teachers and among my colleagues as well. So now it's high time to consider alternative uh, ways of doing IELTS uh, to traditional paper-based, such as the CT IELTS or computer delivered or IELTS indicator. This is something we can talk in the future. Um, today, so we'll be talking about the CD IELTS, what it's like, advantages and disadvantages, available resources, and, and so forth. Um, basically, uh, again, uh, I'll attempt to answer all of these questions. And if you have any further questions, you can ask at the end of the webinar, and I will be opening the chat for you as well. So here's the agenda for today. So we'll be covering uh, some basic content of uh, CD IELTS advantages and some possible disadvantages resources available, and we'll have, as I said, a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Now, uh, the, a lot of students like of mine and those students who are preparing for IELTS, they constantly ask uh, questions like, is CD IELTS more, more difficult or less difficult? But obviously, uh, you, should, you should keep in mind that uh, Cambridge uh, does its best to maintain high standards for all types of exams, including IELTS. So there is absolutely no difference between um, paper-based IELTS, CD IELTS, or 
IELTS indicator in terms of content and difficulty. They are the same, exactly the same. So basically, what if you're getting, let's imagine, seven from traditional paper-based IELTS, you will be getting the same from uh, computer-based. The same goes for the assessment. There's no difference in the assessment. Criteria is the same uh, with the paper-based and the CD. And CD covers, by the way, three sessions, which are the listening, uh, reading, and writing sessions. And speaking part is the same as traditional face-to-face. -face. You'll be coming into a room and talking to an examiner one-to-one. -one. Uh, there's also one more thing to include here, that there's no difference in the certificates, no difference in validity. Um, just a second, no, I think I'm not patient here. Anyways, okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, I just want to show you the, um, my previous um, exam. So in 2019, in May, I was taking the uh, computer delivered IELTS uh, with the British Council, as you can see. And if you look at the certificate, there's absolutely no difference, no difference in the uh, design, no difference in the, um, the look of it. So there's nowhere it says it's a computer based. So basically there shouldn't be a question whether it's different or whether it's more valid or less valid. They are basically identical. Um, now from my experience, again, I should say there are a number of reasons why you should consider taking the CD IELTS. Um, and it's obviously more comfortable it's much easier to take in, in so many ways. Uh, it's easier in terms of usage, in terms of the functions, well, in terms of the, you know, the whole process, how, it's, how it goes. But again, easier doesn't mean the content is easier. Easier is the whole process of it. But from, from here, you can see that I've taken from one of the websites, 90% of IELTS candidates who took the CD IELTS said it was much easier. So they found it easier compared to a traditional one. Um, now, let's talk about the, the why so many people say it's comfortable. Well, I think this annotation thing is a bit of a challenge now. Um, yeah, I've disabled it. Chat, just a second. Um, now, uh, the, the webinar will be in English throughout the uh, you know, webinar, but if you have any questions, you can ask at the end. But again, yes, the webinar will be conducted in English for now. Now, the comfort of it. Now, a lot of uh, candidates take the um, CD IELTS because, again, the speed is, is very, very good in terms of results. So you, the results come out within five to seven working days, and there may be uh, more flexibility with exam dates as well. It may be possible that British Council and IDP will offer even more dates and, and sessions per day after the quarantine because of the high demand and so many exams are cancelled and there are so many candidates so they need to keep up with the, um, the high flow of, of the um, students so I think um, and again the deadlines are coming up so if you're taking let's say in June July so CD IELTS may, may be something you need to consider now uh, Another important thing here is the fewer candidates. It is very important, and I cannot overemphasize this. Um, so basically, more oxygen you have, you, know, you, you wait less. You, you, you basically keep your energy and keep your fighting mood before the exam. But normally, if you remember, some of you have taken IELTS before, normally, when you wait for hours among a you know, bunch of crowd, your stress level goes up, and you're already exhausted. Uh, both physically and emotionally before before the actual exam and I have experienced this myself so many times like you wait and wait until the actual exam and it never starts you go to the British Council at, at 10 or half past 10 in the morning and you wait until you know, 12 or 12 past you know whatever so now um, again the um, with the CD IELTS, you don't have this. And you come ready with, with full energy, with a fighting mood, and you give it all to, to the exam. And almost all of you grew up in the technology, so I mean, uh, 
some of you are very much very good in technology very good in computing uh, so for this uh, for you this shouldn't be a big a big big problem so cdi also offers uh, quite a familiar interface very much user friendly you have um, um, you know uh, you can change the font you can change the color of the text you can change the, you know the size of it so basically you can adjust it uh, to to your own uh, comfort but and again time timers there's always timer in the cd aisles for example in the reading session there's always timer on the top you can see it you can actually follow the uh, timing and it's not a problem that's amazing one of those uh, conveniences let's say of the cd we will talk talking about this a bit later on now in the cd aisles in the writing session you will be typing well for me i love typing and it's much better and much comfortable much more comfortable than let's say sloppy handwriting and i have horrible handwriting i should say and you know again we'll talk about this a bit later in the writing session um, as far as i know cd aisles was more expensive previously but from may i've heard idp uh, will reduce the fee to the same as the paper based so in terms of money wise it's the same as traditional paper way paper based aisles so it's again uh, much cheaper now another possibility uh, could be that idp and british council will be conducting all four sessions in a single day like in most other countries but again let's wait and see but you know this may not happen um, but if if it did happen it would be very very comfortable of course now let's go through the um, the sessions of the um, of the IELTS so we'll be covering four sessions today um, listening reading writing and speaking now in terms of the uh, listening session one of the biggest advantages uh, of, of, of the um, CD aisles is the, the headphones so you will be sitting in a small room of up to 10 people maybe 15 max and everyone will be sitting let's say you know at two meters away from each other and you will be using headphones throughout the listening and you will have very clear very good um, audio so i mean there's no uh, outside noise that interrupting your listening or disturbing you from doing it well i remember in the real exam in paper-based exam you have hundreds of people in a large room and you have sometimes one or two single speakers and if you are unlucky to sit in the back you may have difficulty with listening sometimes i have had the same experience uh, and again imagine a lot of students there some people are sneezing some people are sick some people are dropping things on the floor and a lot of time you have, you have this kind of noise of paper uh, in, with a cd you will not have this uh, again another thing is you can go um, back and forth anytime you want um, i will be talking i'll be showing you the interface in a second now um, one more thing you have to keep in mind is listening the uh, listening you have to type and listen concurrently the same as in the paper but in the paper you will be writing by hand but here you have to listen and type uh, so you have to sometimes click things like multiple choice sometimes you have to drag answers from one place to another place for example if you are having listening session um, if you're having a map so you have to you know drag answer let's a to the correct part of the map in listening now another thing is like in the uh, CD aisles you have highlighter you can highlight anything uh, or you know whatever comfortable for you like text and stuff so which is one of those good things and unfortunately in paper base you cannot actually have highlighter now no extra time to copy as you know in the listening session normally you should have 10 minutes to copy your answers into answer sheet but you will not have this with a CD obviously you know you don't have answer sheet everything is in the computer so you submit your answers at the end of the listening so no extra time but uh, you still have time to check your answers two minutes at the end of the exam so you have time to you know scroll or like go back and forth uh, the questions you just want to check now 
when you type, by the way, uh, there is no auto correction or spelling check. So you have to be quite careful with this. As in the paper base, you still have time before the listening, 30 seconds to look through the questions. And after listening again, you can go back and, and check your answers. Now, this is a kind of interface. This is how it looks like. Um, oops, let me go back. Oops. Yeah. So we have the questions here uh, at the bottom. If you can see, these are the questions. The, the interface or the screenshot was taken from the sample. So um, here normally you should have 40 questions. Now let's try to let's try to see the actual. Um, actual thing in a second. I'll show you the how it looks like and where you can actually find the uh, real uh, exam papers. Just a second. Yeah, this is the um, IDP uh, website. You can also find the samples from the British Council website as well. Um, so I've, I've chosen the IDP here. So and you can you can press this CD IELTS, and here you can you can find uh, about uh, CD IELTS. So if you press it, you will have this screen. You can book from here, or if you scroll at the bottom, you have this clickable text. So if you click it, I have already done. You will have uh, this this page, and here you can have samples for listening reading and writing. So let's press this listening and you will have this. And let's say, well, I've clicked. Now you can check the sound here. Change the volume using the bar in the top right corner. So yeah, so here on the bar top right corner, you have the volume adjustment thing. So let's continue. So I've read the instructions and you start the test. Right, um, this now here, um, so basically you can answer the questions you see here at the bottom. As you answer to the questions, uh, the questions are changing the color. So for example, question four and I don't know, question six, seven, and so on and so on. So here you have to drag. So I'm dragging the answers here. Now, can you see here the ones that are in the black color this means basically these questions are not answered. So it's very convenient. I can jump through the questions throughout the exam. Um, so it's again, very, very convenient to use. And as you can see here on the top, so you have timer, you can actually uh, watch the clock throughout the exam. Again, this is very handy thing in reading and in writing, maybe not so in listening. So here's the interface, again, uh, we weren't given the option because again, it's a sample, but in the real exam, you will be given the uh, options to ch change the, um, uh, the font. So you can make it bigger, you can, you can make it smaller and so on. Another thing is, as, a, as I said before, like you can highlight. Yeah, so here I wanna highlight some questions. I mean, if you find this useful, you, you can do it, but if you don't, then it's not necessary. Another thing is like you can, you can, for example, make some small notes. Well, um, I don't know if, if again, it's something, you know, you might consider again, you cross, cross it and again, you see this small thing comes up here. It's another convenient thing for the, um, for the let's say technophiles who love all those, you know, functions. Um, now let's go back to our presentation now here. Now the next session is obviously reading. Um, one of the things I found very, very comfortable and, and very, very useful with the reading session was um, the screen. It's amazing, it's huge. Um, like on the left side, you can actually put the old text and on the right side of the, of the screen, you can have the questions. So you can actually have the questions and reading passage on the same screen. Uh, it's very amazing because in the paper base, you have to jump back and forth all the time. 
but here you can do it in one screen. And I'll, I'll be showing you the interface and I, you will know how it looks like. Now you can again change the font size, you can highlight, um, you can copy paste. And by the way, this is very comfortable. It saves a lot of your time. So whenever you find the answer, just from the text, especially if it's a gap fill, you just copy and paste. So you don't have any problem with the misspelling. Uh, you know, some, some students do have a problem. Sometimes you copy from the passage into the answer sheet with a wrong spelling. So you don't have this, you know, uh, problem here. Uh, again, the time comes saving, as I said. Um, now, uh, a lot of students or IELTS candidates when you talk, when you say to them it's computer based, they automatically assume that it's a normal traditional computers they have at home. Ob obviously, it's not. Uh, it's an application or a program or a software in the computer. Uh, it's not a traditional, so you cannot actually use vocabulary. You cannot use Google. You cannot use your Telegram to chat with your friends and ask for advice. So, I mean, you know, don't even uh, hope for it. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, so you see here on the left, you have the uh, questions. And um, sorry, just a second, there are some more people. So on the left, on the right, you have the uh, questions. So you can easily uh, read and answer the questions at the same time. Now, if you, if you go back to our previous screen, I'll show you the, how it actually looks like in the real exam. So again, I do the same thing about the clickable link and it comes to this page. So your question types, so I click to this button. So I will have this reading part. So it's one hour as usual. So this is the text, okay? Um, now look at the timer here. So time is already, uh, you know, ticking. So I can always constantly look into uh, the time anytime. I mean, you know, it's on, on the top. So I answered the questions here. So let's say just randomly, yeah, and so on. Um, again, the same thing I can highlight or I can, I can make some notes here. So this is a question. In a question four, uh, it's true, maybe in a question mark, I'm not sure if it's a true or false question, so I can you know, leave a note here and I always come back and, and check. Again, throughout the reading session, uh, you can jump back and forth, so you can you know, do a lot of things here um, as you do the test. So let me show you some of the gap fields. You see here, you can, you can type, um, I type here now. Oh, okay, I cannot, I think it's a sample. It doesn't give me this option, but I can copy and I can paste here. Again, it doesn't work maybe with a sample. So with this kind of gap fill questions, it's easy to copy paste, copy paste all the time. I'm sorry, it's a, it's, it's a dragging thing, yeah? So I have options to choose at the bottom. So I can, I can do this, yeah? So it's very, very comfortable and I love it. Um, bum, bum, bum. So here you have headings. So what do I do with the headings? So again, you see on the top, you have doop and doop, you see, pretty comfortable as well. So you basically drag, the, you click it first and then drag it to the correct page or correct question. Um, so again, scroll up and down, uh, very comfortable as well. And the questions remain static here. Okay, uh, anything I missed here? Now, uh, as you can see the time, if I actually you know, bring the, uh, the mouse, the time shows the seconds. If I don't, then it shows only the minutes. Um, so that's the kind of, with the uh, reading part. And again, I remember from, from my exam, um, the, I had so much uh, extra time in the reading to my big surprise. Normally I spend a lot of time for reading and it's not the easiest session for me, but in the computer based, I had lots of extra time. So I was always, you know, going back and forth and checking those, you know, answers that I, I wasn't sure about. Um, okay, now the next session uh, we'll be covering is the, the most interesting one. 
the writing. Um, and the most interesting one, and for some people, the most challenging one as well. Now, in terms of the writing, uh, obviously, as I said, and you already guessed, you will, you will not be writing with a pen, you will be typing, but you will be provided paper and a pen for notes, you know, so you can always make notes for the essays on a traditional pen and paper and, um, and use the screen and type. So you must be good at typing and your typing speed must be really, really good. So if you're using one finger for the typing and you're typing with one finger and it's, it's crazy, you waste a lot of time. You're, you're not given extra time for this. If your typing speed is slow, it's your bad and you're not uh, compensated for this. Yeah. So we will be talking about some of the uh, websites and applications you can use to improve your typing speed. Okay, the next thing is like, again, yeah, we've talked about this. You don't have to write, uh, worry about handwriting or neatness of your essay. Um, you know, this is a big problem for a lot of uh, students, especially young students who've grown up with the gadgets, you know, they're very good at typing, but when it comes to handwriting, they, they have a big problem. Now, it's easier to edit erase, delay. Again, you see here, copy paste, this amazing uh, function. Uh, I'll, I'll show you why it's, it's convenient and why it's important that you use that and, and that you know about this. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this now. The one more thing is again, yeah, I mean, there's no uh, correction or spell check in the writing session. And so you have to be careful for the misspelling now remember, the, uh, in the writing session, you will not be writing uh, in a traditional uh, Word document. Yeah, you will be writing on a different platform, which has no, uh, you know, functions that you have in the Word document. Um, yeah, again, um, on-screen timer, which is again amazing thing to to have. So you don't have to, you know, look for the time or ask for the time. It's always on your screen. And one more amazing thing is you have the word count. That's pretty cool because you know exactly how many words you're writing and how many words you have left tells the let's say minimum requirement. But for a good candidate, for a competent candidate, this shouldn't be a big problem, but something nice to have. Now, this is a, how it looks, this part one uh, of the writing session. So again, you have on the left, you have the uh, task one, you have the graph. In this case, on the right, you have the, let's say space or platform where you type. Now you see it's basically blank, empty. So you, you, you type and that's it. No um, any kind of tools or functions to use. And um, okay, let's have a look in the actual actual platform. Again, you do the same, click, and you have the writing here. So you can do the task one, task two. So I have opened it here already. So in this case, task one and two, yeah. So again here, uh, well, well, this is one I've copied from. So you simply type here. Can you see that? Sorry, I know it means nothing, but yeah. Um, now, can you highlight it here? Uh, no, you cannot do that. Can you make notes here? No, you cannot do that. You can make notes, as I said, to the provided uh, paper and the pen, uh, and then use the, uh, the platform here. Um, and I have a lot of messages, I'm sorry. Uh, I have messages on the chat, but I'm sorry, I cannot read them all and, and do this at the same time. I'll be going to the chat in a second at the end of the session and we'll be discussing maybe if you have questions. Now, have a look here. So you can actually do the task one or task two. So it's up to you which one you start first. So in this case, I want to do the task two. So here I have the on the, on the left, I have the question. Uh, let's say I can copy, can I? Let me check it. So in this case, I cannot. So I will be writing here. So, and let's imagine in the, during the exam, 
you want to add something in the um, just a second sorry I have to... okay now in the middle of the writing session uh, you you want to add something or you want to change your paragraph or you want to add a new sentence in in the middle of your paragraph or I don't know I mean you, you want to add a word you can do it here easily yeah so you simply copy and paste so I'm sorry for this illegible stuff okay the average standards people's health yeah blah, blah. now I want to add here uh, some word in, the, in between to this here so basically uh, so I can do it this way yeah copy and paste that's great isn't it yeah or imagine um, I want to make notes here something pops up in my mind and I just want to make notes and again I can always you know copy it here and paste so I, I can use the whole platform or the whole um, page um, for my in uh, convenience yeah um, and some people are saying that I'm only showing the, the PowerPoint I'm sorry about this I'm sorry yeah now can you I think you can see it now yeah nothing you can see it now so yeah this is the kind of um, platform you have um, yeah, again, copy paste, and you can use the whole platform for your own um, notes and writings. And again, you can anytime copy, paste, and drag and change and stuff like this. Um, and the word count is always at the bottom here. You, can, you have it uh, here at the bottom. You can always check how many words you have written. Um, but one thing to be very careful is by any chance, do not delete your text. If you delete it, you cannot undo it it's gone it's gone forever yeah so you know don't dare to do that i mean if you have you know just be careful um, now one more thing they uh, in the writing session i found uh, the uh, difficult or quite uncomfortable is the um the uh, you see the screen i mean the page you have here it doesn't it doesn't start from a new paragraph automatically you you can continue go on and on and on yeah i mean it continues endlessly like this and sometimes you, you cannot really know how many words you have written or i mean not words but you know the length of your paragraph so if you're used to typing on your um doc format in the document your word document it, it kind of gives you some picture how you know how many lines you have or on the average paragraph but here it doesn't so it just you just have to, something you need to be aware of and in my uh, actual exam i had another problem uh, with a cd ielts it's not a problem but small thing to consider i was writing too much um, i mean be careful yeah so don't overwrite i was writing about 400 something words yeah? it was too much and Obviously, I didn't have a good mark, obviously. So think about this, be careful. So yeah, I mean, so this is the thing with the writing. Well, let's go back to our thing. Um, now, the last thing um, is the, the writing, I mean, speaking. Now, in the speaking, I mean, I, I don't have much to say here. Um, it's the face-to-face, 100% the same as in the uh, paper-based um, exam. So with the British Council, I had the speaking, I think, one or two days after the actual exam. Um, it wasn't on the same day, so maybe they will change it and we'll, we'll have on the same day, but yeah. Um, Again, if you have questions, you can ask maybe at the end of the session. Now, what are some of the challenges here yeah, to, to, to consider the drawbacks? So personally for me, I didn't find any drawback and I love using computer and I'm 
using computer for the last uh, month and a half during the quarantine, but things to keep in mind. The, with anything, um, you need practice. The same goes for the uh, computer-based, computer-delivered IELTS. Because it's a new interface, some people are not very good in computer or maybe they're not used to it. Um, so it requires some practice. You have to sit and use the computer and then you know try to do it on your screen, especially in the reading session. Some people are very conservative. They like the smell of paper. They like the sound of paper. They, they like to touch. Um, but you know, you know, things are changing. Um, now speed typing is a must and I, I will repeat this over and over again and I'll be showing you some applications in a second. It's a must. It's a must not only for type, I mean, computer-based, it's a must for listening as well. It's a must for reading. Imagine listening is going on and it says a gap fill and you're typing very slowly and you're missing the questions. You're missing the next questions and so on. So yeah, typing fast is, is important. Typing fast doesn't mean you have to type whatever comes yeah, with approximate spelling. You have to also spell accurately as well because in listening, in reading, as well as in writing, uh, spelling mistake is a mistake and your answer is not, I mean, um, accepted here. Yeah? Now, it's very important you have to be computer literate, so you will need to, to know the, um, some people are joining in. Am I sharing the correct, yeah. Okay. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. We are almost at the end of the, the end of the session. Sorry for a second. So this is what computer literate is not about. Okay. So yeah, you need to know how to navigate. Yeah. So you navigate basically means going back and forth the questions. You need to know how to scroll, you know, scroll the text. You need to, you know, click. So you know how to click. You need to highlight. You need to drag. So like, you don't want to get like confused. Yeah. You need to know. You need to click some answers and drag up and forth. Copy paste. Learn how to use it. Like Control C or Control V. Copy paste. Uh, and and you have to do them all very very quickly. And I'm sure most of you know them all pretty well. Now, resources we have for this, uh, I've included exams, which is ITP, British Council. As I said, you can go to their website and find lots more information. Um, and there are some lots of uh, YouTube videos as well, where you can find the information, you can find the samples. They even show uh, how the rooms look like and stuff like this. Uh, with the British Council, I remember I was taking the exam in the Yoju, I think it's Yoju University. It was that was, they had a big hall, but it still was very quiet, and we were like ten people. Now online IELTS, you can practice some uh, things online as well, and I, sh I will show you in a second uh, platform which is almost identical to actual exam, and you need to learn how to type. So let me show you the. Well, I started using it recently, IELTSonlinetests.com. Um, and here you have lots of uh, tests you can find. Yeah, so here, academic tests, you go into academic and the internet, where, yeah. And you have tons and tons of materials you can use. So you have in volume one, you have within the volume, you have lots of tests to do. And yeah. So you have the listenings, you have the readings, and writing. I'm not sure if they check the writing. I think it's paid uh, extra, with an extra pay, you can get your writings checked. You can also do the speaking part. I think it's an extra pay as well. Um, now in terms of the 
typing. Now, again, um, as I said, I mean, this is something you need to look uh, through on your own. And this is a good site to actually get acquainted, get used to the online or computer uh, platform. Now for the typing, I use this typing club. So this is another thing you can, you can have a look or you can find it on the internet. Lots of them how learn how to type. So, I mean, yeah. So they show basic, they, they teach you how to do the proper typings of all from the letters into, and it goes on and on into writing proper uh, texts, yeah. So this is something also you need, you need to maybe consider, just have a look and learn. And I'm sure most of you are already quite competent typers. Yeah? Now, I think this is the end of our rather brief, um, webinar. Now, um, any questions uh, you might have, I would be more than happy to answer. And also you can ask the questions in the Telegram channel. So you have King's channel and you have a group, you can ask the questions there as well. Now let me do that. Questions, um, please do ask in the chat. Um, you can you can type, or you can simply raise your hand. Maybe I can open the speaker as well. Again, with the uh, CD IELTS, you have to keep in mind that it's, it's something. Uh, I think. Uh, British Council and IDP may definitely consider after the quarantine because quarantine will not end immediately. It will, it will be step by step. Um, and, and I think uh, paper based it will not be the, the good option to, to take. But exams are coming up, deadlines are coming up. So just go for the CD if possible. And I will be also talking about the um, IELTS indicator which is actually online IELTS. Um, it's amazing, this is something to consider because I have read the news from the MDIS. They are also accepting the IELTS indicator. So, which is something we'll be talking in our next webinar, hopefully. Okay, uh, what is the main difference between CD and IELTS indicator? Um, this is Azamat is asking us. Now, I'm not familiar with the IELTS indicator yet, and I have seen the samples. Um, the samples are basically, it's online, even the speaking part is online. Uh, it's almost like a TOEFL IBT. In the TOEFL IBT, you would be doing everything in, in, in you know, one seat with a computer. Um, this is IELTS indicator probably will look like. But uh, CD IELTS is slightly different because in the CD IELTS, you have to go physically to IDP or British Council and sit in their computer and do the listening, reading and writing. But speaking session will be just like traditional IELTS. So this is, this is quite a difference. Now IELTS indicator was actually started very recently because again of the COVID-19. Um, Okay, do they have online mock exam? I'm not sure if they, if, if you can call it mock exam, but they have the sample exams. But if you remember the website I've shown you, there you can actually do the mocks and, uh, and you, they will check it automatically, your listening and your reading. So this is how you can do the mock. But for the writing session, I think you need to have a teacher or instructor to help you. Uh, do you know any students who took IELTS paper-based and online as well? Are the results different? Yes, I know such kind of people. It's one of them is me. And I've taken both and uh, results are different. I mean, okay, then, uh, Paper-based, I had 
all different results. And it would be the same with the um, CD IELTS. Um, I had before uh, paper based, I had eight. I also had 8.5. Computer based, I had eight. If I tried maybe harder, I could have gotten 8.5 or you know less, who knows? But again, the content is the same. Computer-based doesn't mean it's more difficult or less difficult in terms of the content of the IELTS. Um, where can I find the information about the IELTS indicator? That's a good question. I would just like to share this thing as well. Look, um, if you if you open the uh, British Council website, you will have You will have the, um, just let me, let me do it, just sorry for a second. I can do it here as well. Okay, there, I couldn't find it here, but there is, there is one um, page. Okay, I'll try to find it, but I, I'll be posting it on the Telegram channel, okay? There is a page where it clearly talks about IELTS indicator and it gives you more detail. Yeah. Let's say, yeah. So it's, I think I've, I'm on the right page. Yes. IELTSindicator.com. This is a website. You can find lots of, lots of information. You can find also the countries that actually conduct it, and Uzbekistan is one of them. So you can book here. And as I know, as far as I know, uh, MDIS in Tashkent accept IELTS indicator. Maybe other universities as well will follow soon. Okay. So this is the website, IELTSindicator.com. Um, okay, next question is, I got disconnected for a while. I might miss something. Okay, IELTS indicator is basically uh, if you if you open the website, you will get to know more about this. It's online uh, IELTS. Okay, this is something new, and probably I will be taking it next week or so, uh, and I will be sharing my experience with you guys here as well. Is the cost the same as traditional IELTS test? Yes, the cost is the same. Uh, CD IELTS and paper-based IELTS, the cost the same in IDP. I'm not sure about the British Council. You need to call them and check with them. Are there any Cambridge tests for from five to 15 in CD in order to practice? And I'm not aware of this, but you have to again check the website that I showed you. And I think there must be some, yes. Uh, Wiles indicator web camera будет ли включена постоянно или только при спикинге? Ну, как вы сами думаете, да? Ну, конечно, будет включено в течение экзамена, то есть they have to, они должны видеть вас, то есть они должны все контролировать. Uh, of course, it will be switched on. You cannot actually switch off the, the, uh, the camera, yeah? So yes, Skhorov Kamil is saying British Council costs are the same for both. Great. So yeah, I mean, so it's great news. British Council, IDP have the same cost. So there's, there's a question is answered by Srok Kamilov. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, no more questions are coming up. Uh, and I really enjoyed having my first webinar with you guys. Um, thank you very much uh, for attending this. And I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned at least something. And have a good afternoon, uh, or should I say evening? And by the way, uh, one last thing though uh, to, to remind or to tell. Yeah, if you have any questions or you would like to get in touch or you would like to have some questions or things discussed, please go through the Telegram channel. There is a group, we can have a group discussion and we can talk about this. And I'm also conducting online uh, Zoom lessons as well. If you want to join, then just pop in, observe. Yeah, you are very much welcome uh, to join as well. Okay, thanks a lot and have a good evening. Yeah, we'll talk to you. Bye.